In February of 2019, um, Pope Francis gave to the Society of Jesus these four apostolic preferences. And he stressed, of course, that the first one of listening to the Spirit, of this sense of deep prayer and spirituality was, was, was really the foundation for the, whole, for the whole thing. So since then, there's been a, a really good um, reception of the preferences. People are intrigued. People want to know more. And they also want to know more about how the preferences were arrived at and about how do you make a discernment in this way? What are the key success factors, if you want? What are the key things that make it work? So the title of this talk is Discerning Preferences Tell Us More. And I'm trying to answer that question in as, as short a time as possible. I think the first thing that was key was, was clarity. That from the very beginning when Father General launched the process, it was clear. We were following the, the mission and the mandate of the 36th congregation to, to discern the universal apostolic preferences for the Society of Jesus going forward. So he asked us all, he said, with maximum participation of Jesuits and our, our partners, we should discern what those preferences should be for the next, for the next 10 years. It was a very clear question. That's the first thing that really helped us all, I think. And secondly, there was clarity about who would make the decision. That Father General would, would finalize the discernment, would present the results to Pope Francis, and then he would then give really this, the, these preferences or give preferences to the society as a mission. That was the first success factor. The second one was preparation. That Every provincial or regional superior was asked, you know, prepare this. Work out locally what a good process would be. Involve people as much as you can. Send the material to the president of your conference. And the conference um, provincials and major superiors then, then they made a discernment. They heard, read all these results, but they made a discernment. They didn't just summarize those results. And then in turn, the six conferences uh, sent the results to, to Father General. And then in his council, uh, in the enlarged council, in fact, um, there was a further discernment made. Again, not just a summary of the results, but a real discernment. And secretariats were asked to take part. Higher education, collaboration, um, um, secondary and pre-secondary, and also justice and ecology. So a real effort to get maximum involvement, to prepare the ground well. The third aspect I'd underline is prayer. Certainly here in the Curia, in the General Curia, when we, when we met in January of 2019, we emphasised prayer. Prayer with the local Curia community, our Eucharist together, time for prayer alone, so important. The, the process wasn't ours. It was a process where there was an opening for the spirit. We weren't closing the process. We were leaving space for the light of the spirit to come um, and to, to somehow help us, to show us the way. We're not an NGO. We're not a, a corporation. We're not deciding our own way forward. We're trying to do what God wants us to do. We're trying to listen to the voice of the spirit. We're trying to hear the cry of the poor, the cry of the earth. We needed, we needed space for that, and we, we gave ourselves space for it. For me personally, that was just so consoling. And then the Spirit, as I said, the Spirit, the Spirit is there, this believing that the Spirit speaks through each person, so important. We can come with all sorts of stereotypes or prejudices or personal conflicts from the past, but to somehow not solve that, but let it go. Let it go and go somewhere, somewhere deeper. The Spirit speaks to every person, even the people I might not like or might not get on with. The Spirit speaks through them also. And then to share, to be able to share through spiritual conversation. This is what the Spirit has said to me, to share that. And then you can say what the Spirit has said to you. And we go around the group and we try to discern the Spirits together. Key. We had an outside facilitator, Christina Kang from Singapore. She was marvellous. She listened carefully and at the end of each day she led us in the examine. 
So sometimes an outside person can help who can really discern the spirits. We all know in our own lives, individual discernment, it's not so easy. We have to often have a spiritual director who can accompany us and ask the right questions and help us to, to see what's happening in our lives. We're often so close to it that we really can't discern on our own. So the spirit sharing and somebody to help us. Flexibility. This is a, we were discerning together over, over quite a few days and every night the steering group would meet. So it wasn't a prearranged schedule, this and then this and then this, but hmm, let's change tomorrow. Let's, let's do this instead. Here's where the group is. Let's move there. Really following the spirit. The image comes to mind of surfing. I've never surfed myself, but really following the wave of the spirit. Flexibility in the organization. We can get threatened by that because we want to know what's happening on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. The spirit leads us. We have to follow. Flexibility. Time. A bit like the same point. Flexibility, time. Obviously, each process, you can't bring people together and say, come together for four days, or it could be seven, or it could be ten. That's not so realistic. But we gave it time here. We had, we had uh, I think it was eight days here in the Curia to, to discern together. There was time. Initially, people said, this is too much. Maybe three or four will be enough. But in the end, we needed time. And that sense of time gave us the ability to listen to each other, to listen to the spirit, to relax into the process, and to really let the spirit take over. So not having it so compressed and so efficient our world is so busy, so rushed. The temptation can be, let's get this done and move on. But if the issue is really serious, like discerning preferences or opening a new apostolate or closing an apostolate, time. Conversion. Each person being ready to be converted. I'm not so attached to my view that I'm going to stick to that view no matter what. Sure, have your point of view. Certainly present it but maybe somebody else's point of view, somebody else's perspective, somebody else's option is actually where we're being called. So the openness to conversion, personal, institutional, communal. Symbols that move us, again, from the experience here in the Curia, we had a wonderful um, ceremony at the very end where we went to the the tomb of St. Ignatius, we, we first went to Madonna de la Strada to pray at the chapel with Our Lady. Then we processed to the tomb of St. Ignatius where each person lit a candle. And then we went to the rooms of St. Ignatius where we celebrated Eucharist for the general presider. So that connection with our tradition. And in almost every place where the society works, there's that connection. Where was your province founded? When did the institution start? Who were the key people? Is there a statue, a photograph? That connection really starts all the proper resonances for us. And what's all this about? The bottom line here is healing a broken world. We start with a world that's broken. We see the brokenness of the world. We see the world with wonder, so many fantastic, wonderful things, but also so much brokenness so much suffering. And all of this discernment, all of this is for mission, that we can be ministers of reconciliation and healing and hope in a world that, that so much needs reconciliation, that sometimes is so cynical and that needs people who bring the good news and who bring hope. Mm -hmm.